Well, when Avatar first came out, people didn't really know what to expect. And when they walked into a movie theater, they, they sat down and they, they, they saw a film um, that was authored to take advantage of the, the big screen, the giant screen in the case of IMAX, the, the 3D, which was, uh, which was fairly new. Uh, at that time, I think Avatar was the, the first really big movie in, in, uh, in 3D. And so it took them on an experience that they weren't expecting. They were, they were positively surprised. There was no way we could sort of tell people in advance in a 30 second TV spot what was cool about this movie. You just had to sit, sit down and start, start watching it. Um, then on top of that, you know, I, I worked with some of the best design artists in the world to, to create that world and all the creatures in it and, uh, and this beautiful rainforest and all this heavy hardware that came with the, the humans and so on uh, from, from Earth. And, uh, you know, it was a bit of a, a visual pageant. And thirdly, I, I think that they responded to the love story, to the emotions of the film, you know, so it kind of, it kind of hit on, on all cylinders of, of beauty of wonder of epic action and and uh with with real emotion well here's the interesting thing is there's a there's if you're under sort of 22 years old ish you probably almost certainly didn't see avatar in a movie theater so if you're a fan you're a fan of a, of a movie that you've seen you know at home on tv or on a laptop or or some device um so you really haven't seen the movie so you kind of get to watch it for the first time all over again with all of that dimensionality, literally and, and figuratively, that you don't experience unless you go to the to the cinema and ideally go to, you know, a high end cinema that's got the good 3D and the laser projection if it's available in your area or whatever. And you'll experience a version of the film that that it's pretty hard to imagine just watching it on a, on a 2D television set. Um, so I think all of the things that worked the first time when the, when the film came out and was this phenomenal hit are going to work again, especially for a young audience that has never seen it in a theater. And even if you saw it in a theater back then, you know, if you're in your 20s, 30s, whatever, um, you're going to see it at a level beyond what you experienced then because projectors are brighter. We have laser projection now. We remastered the film in 4K, so it's, it's clearer. We've done, we've done parts of it at, at high frame rates to smooth out the 3D, so there's no you know, kind of little bits of strobing or anything like that. So it's, it's better 3D, the colors are beautiful, it's 4K, it's high dynamic range, um, it's remastered in Atmos 9.1 sound, so it looks better, it sounds better. Uh, so even if you saw it before, it's worth seeing it again at this point. In remastering the film, what we strive to do was to just optimize the experience, to enhance that sense of wonder and beauty uh, by improving the 3D slightly and doing that using high frame rate and high dynamic range and things like that. I mean, I've got a very experienced team that's worked with me now on 3D projects for 20 years. We, we sort of knew what we always wanted to do and we just did it. We didn't change the story. We didn't change the cut of the movie, although there might be a little surprise in there someplace if you're paying attention. Uh, but uh, basically it's the same, it's the same film um, in terms of the storytelling, but the visual presentation is just brighter, clearer, sharper, sounds better. Uh, Atmos 9.1 sound, which we didn't have available back then. So it pretty much rocks the house. Well, I think there were a couple of motivators for us in terms of remastering the film, going, going through all that, that, uh, that effort to bring it back out. You know, the first and I think probably most important one is you've got a whole generation of young movie fans that may or may not know the movie, but they certainly haven't seen it in a movie theater. And Avatar is the kind of film that was authored to be seen in a movie theater. I mean, it did very well on home video, blah, blah, blah. But it was authored to be seen and experienced in that immersive, you are there kind of setting of the, of the cinema. In 3D, large screen, great sound, all that, all that sort of thing. And all the attention to detail that we put into the world, into the mix, into the music, into the action, the, the, the animation, design of the creatures, everything. It all pays off better in that setting. So, you know, sure, I'd love to bring Avatar back out every 10 years, you know what I mean? Just so that people can experience it in a, in a movie theater. But obviously the second motivation was, 
it's, you know, it's been quite a while since we made the, the first film. We're bringing out another Avatar film, The Way of Water, um, in, a, in a couple months. And people even have, who know the film may not remember some of the details. And there are a lot of people we can't assume that everybody that might want to see The Way of Water has seen the first film. So getting it out there, making it available to people to have a kind of little event among their friends or within their family to go out and watch uh, and watch the film. It's a great way to prepare yourself for the way of water and make this kind of a, a season of Avatar, if you will. You know, you get to to live in that world. You know, people like in their fantasy worlds, they like persistent world. They like to see the characters over time. They like to just be in the world. And when we released the first film, people said it was too short. We wanted to be there longer, um, you know, and so people went back and they went back and they went back. So now, especially for our, our younger fans, you know, now you can see it in the movie theater and then you can segue right into seeing The Way of Water in a theater and you'll have that, that persistent world. That fantasy world is something that you can in, invest in emotionally. We could have, we could have put in um, a lot of scenes that were taken out, uh, you know, as we were editing the film. And in fact, in 2010, in summer, six months after we released the film initially, um, we, we did release a longer version of the film, eight minutes, eight minutes longer. And that was very well received. And a lot of people went back and saw it in a theater again then. Um, we decided not to do that. We thought, all right, fine. If it's, if it's this kind of classic movie, let's not change a frame. Let's put it out the way the, way the, the vast majority of people saw it, not, not muddy the water. But I did decide to make one tiny change toward the end of the film. And so I challenged people to see if they could spot what it is. It's not a big thing. It's no big reveal, but it does make a nice little step toward the, uh, toward the sequel to The Way of Water, which is coming out a couple months later.